Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, I will provide a brief overview on Amazon Q business. These are some reference URLs. I would recommend that you visit these URLs as they have additional information on this particular topic. I will have these URLs posted in the description of this video. I have created a playlist for Amazon Q on my channel. The URL to this particular playlist is right here. Um, I would recommend that you bookmark this URL for handy and easy access. This particular playlist will have this video on Amazon Q Business, as well as it already has videos on Amazon Q Developer uh, Overview, and as well as a whole bunch of hands-on labs. So this playlist is pretty useful for anybody who wants to learn how to work with Amazon Q both developer and business. So what is Amazon Q Business? It is a fully managed Gen AI powered assistant that can be configured to answer questions, provide summaries, generate content or completely task based on any enterprise data. So as you know, most of the enterprises and organizations will have a lot of documents, a lot of citations, Excel spreadsheets, PDFs, whole bunch of data sources, a uh, whole bunch of document repositories, different types of data repositories, you name it and they have it. And along with all of this data, what they don't have or what they need is someone who can come in, who can review through all this content, provide a summary, tell them what is relevant, what is not relevant, what these documents are doing, perhaps even generate some content using the existing content or possibly complete a task. And if they're looking for someone like that, Amazon Q Business is their friend. Right? So this AI, uh, Gen AI powered assistant can do all of this very easily. Now, what Gen AI, uh, this Gen AI powered tool, which is Amazon Q Business does, is that it also allows end users to receive immediate and permission-aware responses. Now, what do we mean by permission-aware responses? So in any enterprise, not everyone has access to everything or all the data that is there. Some data is uh, you know, confidential and only a certain set of individuals in the organization have access to it. So if anybody has concerns that, okay, if I use Amazon Q Business and some people who are not supposed to have access to a specific set of data will suddenly start having access, then they should not worry about that. Why? Because behind the scenes, Amazon Q Business uses IAM to ensure that any response that it generates uh, for the end users it takes into consideration um, the access to data that that particular end user or that particular individual has. If the person does not have access to that information or that data, then that information will not be included in the response. So when your end users interact with Amazon Q Business, the response is going, that is going to be generated is going to be permission aware. And this is across different enterprise data sources. Uh, you know, it could be used by different um, different departments in your organization, like IT, HR, help desk, or possibly any other department. Right? Let's say if if even a team had a ton of documents and they wanted to use Amazon Q uh, to kind of you know uh, answer any questions or provide summaries from this document then they could easily upload all these documents to a, to a S3 bucket, use Amazon Q Business, and then you know start leveraging this content to answer any questions or ask um, a particular question or provide summaries or in fact even generate some content using all of this content. So all of that is possible. Amazon Q Business also provides administrative controls, such as ability to block entire topics or filter both the questions and the finalized answers using certain keywords. 
It integrates with Amazon Kendra, Amazon S3, SharePoint, Microsoft SharePoint, and Salesforce. Now let us see how does Amazon Q Business work. Now, with Amazon Q Business, you can create an interactive chat application environment for your organization's end users. And to do this, you could use a combination of enterprise data as well as a large language model knowledge. If you don't want to use the LLM, I mean, I know that there are certain organizations that are kind of skeptical in doing that. You could simply just use enterprise data as well. Amazon Q Business has an admin workflow and an end user workflow. So let us go and look at these two workflows. Admin workflow. As the name suggests, admin workflow is used by administrators to configure Amazon Q Business application. Behind the scenes, it uses, remember it generates permission aware responses. It uses AWS IAM uh, Identity Center to connect to your workforce users. Let's say if you do not have ID IAM Identity Center set up and connected, then you can still do Identity Federation using IAM. Your application creation process, that is your Amazon uh, Q business web application creation process will depend on whether you are using IAM Identity Center or whether you are doing Identity Federation using AWS IAM for end user access management. So now you see that depending upon what you are using, your admin workflow flavor will change. So let us look at both of these workflows as to how we go about creating this uh, Amazon Q business uh, application depending upon, you know, you, depending upon whether we are using AWS IAM Identity Center or we are doing Identity Federation using AWS IAM. So one of the first things that we will have to do if we are using IAM Identity Center as part of our admin workflow is that we will have to enable I am identity center. And then we will have to connect the identity source for our Amazon Q business application environment. And once we have enabled and connected the identity source, then we have to connect this I am identity center to our Amazon Q business. Right. Next thing after that we need to do is we need to create a fully configured Amazon Q business web application using the console. So there are two parts to this, right? One thing is your identity uh, center enablement and, and creation. And also uh, the second thing over here is that you create a fully configured Amazon Q business web application and have it connected to your identity IAM center. So these are the two core components, the IAM identity center, as well as the fully configured Amazon Q business web application. And once both of these are created and connected, that's when you can enhance your web application experience by adding data sources to it, or you can even customize the UI of your web, app, uh, of your web application for your end users. But these two are the key. Now, how does the admin workflow change if you are doing identity federation using AWS IAM? So you will see that the last three steps are the same. That is creating a fully configured Amazon Q business web application, enhancing the web application, and finally customizing the UI for your end users. Remember the only change is how you are managing end user access management uh, for your uh, application. So if you are doing it using IAM Identity Center, you have to enable it, connect it, you know, connect the identity source and eventually have it plugged in and wired with Amazon Q Business web application. But if you're not using that, then you will have to configure your external identity provider, right? Because remember, you want to do identity federation now and then connect it to your AWS IAM uh, identity provider instance. So this is the only thing that changes. So you have to figure out whether you want to use IAM Identity Center or you want to do identity federation via AWS IAM. In either cases, you have to keep it ready. You have to configure it or provision it and do the needful and finally have it connected 
to your Amazon Q Business Web Application. Post that once you have fully, uh, once you have created a fully configured AWS, uh, sorry, Amazon Q Business Web Application. Post that you can do your enhancements and customizations, whatever you feel that is necessary for your end users. Now coming to the user workflow. So we looked at the admin workflow, right? Where you are doing all of that stuff. Now let's look at the user workflow. As part of the user workflow, your users will start navigating to your organization's Amazon Q Business Web Experience URL, sign in with their credentials. They will start chatting with it and ask questions. Remember that's the in intention. And if your question requires information that is beyond the scope of your enterprise data, then Q will respond back saying it could not find an answer from your documents. And of course, remember all the responses that are generated are permission aware. Now, Amazon Q Business stores conversation history for 30 days and it maintains the conversation context after the conversation ends. You can resume this conversation from where you left within a 30 day period. So till the time it maintains the conversation history. So this is a very simple workflow. You basically go to the web URL, you connect to the URL, you sign in, you start chatting with this particular bot that you have created, you ask questions, and then it will answer uh, your question depending upon you know what permissions you have, what access you have, and if you want to come back and you want to pick up a conversation from where you left, it's, it stores the conversation history for 30 days. Now, this is a generic Amazon Q business workflow. Like anybody ask you, how does this particular tool work? First, it uses a retriever chosen by the admin to retrieve documents that are relevant to the query following the authorization and access control. Then it generates a response to the user query, of course, using a combination of enterprise data and LLM or only enterprise data. And then finally, it returns the generated response to the end user. Remember, the response that is generated is a permission aware response. I'm repeating this again and again because otherwise there'll still be someone who will come and comment like, okay, how am I going to ensure that my data is not shared with individuals who do not have access to it. All the responses that are generated are permission aware. And when it generates this particular response, it assigns a unique message ID to each answer for tracking purposes. So this is in very simple words, how Amazon Q business works. Now, as we discussed earlier, an enterprise or an organization may have a whole bunch of different um, data repositories, file repositories, you name it and they have it. So of course you need different connectors to connect to all these different uh, repositories or to, to all these different uh, utilities, right? So for example, you have Box, you have Gmail, you have MySQL, you have S3, you have Slack, you have Teams, SQL Server. So all of these different data repositories are there and certainly you need some kind of a tool or a data connector or some kind of a utility to connect to these different sources. Of course, this is the list of data connectors that uh, are available while and when I'm recording this video. Um, again, I would recommend that you go back to those reference URLs and get the latest and greatest information. They keep on adding more and more data connectors every single day. So it doesn't really matter where your enterprise uh, data lies. All these connectors, uh, data connectors are available to you and you can certainly leverage all of them uh, depending upon your requirement to connect to that data, to fetch the data. And then you can do whatever you like, like you know, generate a response, create a summary, provide, uh, create some content, answer some questions, whatever that is necessary. Now, what are the different types of document formats that are su supported by Amazon Q Business? You have PDF, HTML, XML, uh, CSV, XLS, rich uh, text format, PPTs uh, over here, which uh, DOXs, that's document, Word document, and TXTs. There is XSLT and Markdown as well, but I'm not quite sure how much. Uh, 
um, they would be used. But these are some of the most common ones that are supported by Amazon Q Business. I guess most of the organizations will have a lot of PDFs, a lot of Excels, a lot of CSVs, and a whole bunch of uh, Microsoft Word documents and text documents, right? And of course, PowerPoints. So these are some of the common document types that a lot of organizations or enterprises use on a regular basis. And as you see, most of the document types are supported. So after this entire conversation, if we had to sum up some features for Amazon Q Business, what would they be? Remember, it's a chat box. It gives you a conversational experience with generative AI prompts and tasks. You can start and continue your conversations and pick them up uh, within a 30-day span. It gives you easy and quick feedback mechanism. It has a lot of custom plugins. It can have personalized and permission-aware responses, easy deployment, a lot of connectors. We just saw if you had to create a biz, uh, sorry, an index, you could do that. Your data and application security is definitely there. It gives you a lot of admin controls. You can transfer conversation into apps and um, you can integrate this with other applications via APIs. Now, finally, let's look at the subscription and pricing for Amazon Q business. So you can see there is a light version and a pro version. The light version is $3 per user per month and the pro version is $20 per month. But if you look at the, the features, the light version is basically allowing you to connect Amazon Q business to your business knowledge or data, receive permission aware responses and use uh, secure and seamless uh, single sign-on if required. But the pro version goes above and beyond this, right? So it can allow you to create new content, gain faster insights, data insights, because remember Amazon Q also integrates with QuickSight, that is a reader pro, extend the uh, capabilities with some custom plugins, you can also create and publish and share apps. Remember that you could transfer your data to certain apps if required. Um, you could choose your data sources by each app card. And again, you could create and consume Amazon Q app, uh, Q uh, apps outputs with APIs. So all of this is possible. There is a free trial also available. Please ensure that you review the terms of the free trial. And after that, continue further ahead. So this pre-trial is for Amazon Q Business and Amazon Q in Quick Insight. And you have to understand what is available in detail. I believe it's a 60-day uh, free trial and uh, it's a 30-day free trial over here with Quick Sight. But yeah, look at the, the terms and details. I'm not going to cover it right now because I would recommend that before you start using, you refer and understand these terms in complete details. So this is it from me today, guys. I hope that this video was helpful. Do post your comments and I will see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.